This router table is almost done. It just needs a few finishing touches like uh, adding a drawer and balancing the impeller and a few other things like that. Now I need to make a guard to go around this motor and I think this twisted piece of maple is just right for the job. Cut down to size, the twist isn't as bad anymore. And now perfectly flat. That was 3 minutes and 22 seconds on the camera, plus the time to set it up, which consisted of putting the jig on the table saw, because it was already set up from the last time I used it. I still want to balance this impeller a little bit more. I've got this on something soft so I can vibrate and this thing kind of amplifies the vibrations. So you can see this thing shake. And I've been experimenting with putting these weights on different positions and I marked all the blades in here. And I think if I put those on one and two, that reduces the shaking by quite a bit. I just tighten these a little bit so they become stuck. Let's put some more. And there's no sign that one side is heavier than another. I glued these things to the back of the blower so that I could mount this part on here without having to take the impeller off again. So it's been really annoying that this cabinet rocks on the floor quite a lot, so I thought I'd check it on my table saw. And it is off by a little bit. I think I could make uh, this leg one millimeter shorter and then it would be perfect. But I actually made this a little bit too tall, so I'll trim a little bit off of all the legs. Uh-oh, now it rocks more than it did before. Okay, that's good now. now. The only problem is, my basement floor is not all that flat, so it will continue to rock. Beveling the edges of the legs is important because that prevents chip out if the cabinet is dragged around the floor. I'm just doing the electrical for this thing, which is basically an extension cord with uh, the hot lead cut off and the switch on it. And I'm putting a plug on this motor here, and I've just soldered these together. And the trick I've learned is to always cut the wires a different length. So there's one less way that these can short together even with tape on them. And bring on the comments about not using heat shrink tubing. And 
and rotor and fan together, right now drawing almost 400 watts. I wanted to feel from the inside where most of the air was leaking into it. And this is the only time I regret that I didn't make the uh, dust compartment a little bit bigger. So most of the drafts I could feel was just around the edges here between the tabletop and the cabinet. I'm not sure if it's worth trying to put any sort of sealant there. I wanted to see how much of a dust storm I'd get inside the cabinet so I put a camera and a box covered with saran wrap and put that in the running rotor table because I don't have one of those action cameras. And then I made some more dowels, this time 3 8 inch dowels. And I had my rotor fences fairly closed. I tried it again with them open all the way just to get more airflow in there just to see if that would cause more of a dust storm. And it wasn't really any worse. I just made all these dowels. Let's see how dusty the rotor is. That shows no sign of getting clogged up here. I guess there is a couple of chips there. And the most suggested idea is that I put some kind of hose on here to the outside of the cabinet so that the rotor can suck in clean air, but that's kind of tricky because it also has inlets on the side and the speed control here which I'd be blocking. Fortunately a hose like that doesn't appear to be necessary. And on my other rotors it wouldn't be easy either. On here I'd be blocking the speed control, other than that it might be easier. Here again blocking the speed control. On this one blocking the speed control. The only one where it wouldn't be too bad would be the one on here because it's got no speed control. But then I just realized it's got air inlets here as well. So actually that one would be quite difficult to put a hose on. And looking inside the cabinet, the sawdust doesn't look like it's been blown around too much. After that I put two coats of varnish and everything and then I put it back together. And there it is, really done now and I've got a drawer with my rotor bits and accessories in here. And it'll be nice always having a rotor table ready to go because that will easily save me a couple of minutes, maybe once or twice a month when I want to put a quick round over on something.